And in the next quarter, which is July, we distributed 600,000, okay? And then in the next quarter for the, for the, for the farm, which was October, we made 1.3 million. 1.3 million came in. What year? Of 2018. That was the total profit. That was the total profit for that a quarter. For that quarter, net profit, distributed. Net profit. It's distributed. So oh, 2018. Uh huh. In October. Correct. For Valley View or all three. All three. So for the farm itself. So Smart Initiatives would retain its 20 percent of the 1.3. So it owned 20 percent of the profit. So 260, 270 thousand dollars, whatever that is, that belongs okay. to Smart Initiatives. Okay. So now, now. Um, we go into the fourth quarter, and, the, and then Dave has what we call a farming issue where he has, uh, they bring in new genetics into the farm. Like uh, this, this is something that happened like first week of December or so. Um, bring new genetics into the farm, and it goes to Murphydite. Okay, actually, I would say it probably happened in the middle of November because it showed its head in December. So the farm, about half the crop goes to Murphydite. Well, in other words, it, you, need the, you need it to be female to can, when you when you birth your product so that you continue to make your clones to continue to cycle your farm. They had to trim and throw nearly 60% of that product away and then replant within a couple days to maintain the cycles. And so this happens, it's a rarity event, but when it does happen, it's something you gotta deal with quickly, right? Well, that was the fourth quarter. That was fourth quarter. So what ended up happening for Dave is they made, they made, they made no profitability they they put they, but they're but they're pulling the product now because they rotated the crop. They're literally pulling it as we speak and then profitizing. So what will end up happening is on our first quarter we'll be right back in a clip. And a clip is probably if we maintain the cadence that we had before, million five to two million a quarter, right? The the where we have opportunity for Zabala to increase its its income is the fact that Zabala still has another 25,000 square foot structure that can be grown in. And 25,000 5, square foot structure that can be grown in. Okay. And it owns one of the only permits in the valley for erection of another 60,000 in the center courtyard. It so it could start a new... In the same courtyard. For 60,000. 85,000. 85,000. We could literally... It already has that permit. It already has that permit. But it doesn't have the state license for that. No, no. State license would encompass Covers everything. Encompass everything. So all that has to... Now, I told Dave, I said, well, now here's what happened. And C Quadrant is building an extraction facility. Well, it's built, sitting right here. What Dave does is he sells his trim, the leaf and the stalk, for about $105 a pound. The flower is what's sold for seven, eight, nine hundred dollars $900 a pound. But the leaf and stock is sold for about 105, and that's what, what do the, they do with that? The extraction facilities like ours squish it, take the oil out of it, and sell the oil. The oh. oil is what they use to put into cookies and brownies and gummy bears and and the wax pens. And the medicine. And the yeah, medicine. Little bottles. Yeah, medicine. that's right. They have to have it in oil form. And the oh. rest, the rest goes for THC. That's the, the flour that everybody's using to smoke. Okay, just the raw plant. And that's where the big bucks are. That's right. But, but the oil still produces what compared to a pound? Of well, I'll give you an example. Stuff? We can make about four or five hundred dollars a pound if we turn into oil. As opposed to how much? One hundred five dollars a pound, just selling it to the guys that do it. Hmm. But what extractions? What what C Quadrant specializes? It was called tolling deals. You know, what happens is farmers tolling is when a farmer grows his product, doesn't charge you for it, just brings it to you then the facility will extract it to its oil or, or uh, powdered form and then give it half back to you to sell at full price. So rather than making $105 a pound, you can get $250 to $300 a pound. So in other words, you just, rather than selling the trim for cash and to an extraction facility and letting them make $500 a pound, just take the trim, bag it, bring it to an extraction place, say, you can have it, I want half of the extracted product back. Then they extract it and they go, Here's your half, and here's our half. Then that is sold for the premium price. It just delays your, your cash flow by another month, but it triples your income. So with a combination of adding square footage and doing the right deal with the trim, there's a lot more money to be made as a ball. Now, while this is happening, okay, Mike and I, March of 2018, the investors, some of the investors from Zabala, 
some of the investors from LCG, some brand new investors come in and we build that thing. And which is what you're here, you know, that you can see. It's a 42,000 square foot, four story, uh, mega extraction laboratory. And from an extraction standpoint, normal extraction facilities, you know, that have the equipment, you'll see some chemical chemist equipment in here, uh, you know, a PhD or a master with chemistry background that knows how to take the oil or powdered form of the nutrition out of the plant, leaving out any carcinogens, no, you know, no, no alien elements, all back down to either it's premium THC element or it's premium CBD element, okay? That facility is worth its weight in gold. It doesn't grow, it doesn't make product, it is just a factory that gets between the farm and the product retailer, okay? So, how many of those do you, do you, if you know, are there in California? Well, there's, a, there's, there's easily a thousand extraction facilities all between here and, and all up and down the seaboard from here all the way up to Oregon. But mega labs, large extraction facilities, remember, scale. How many on this scale? On this scale, 20. I mean, so when you, you have, you have competition. No. Let me put it this way. In the hemp market, in the CBD market, Okay, if you put all of the CBD product that's being produced right now into a single room, you couldn't satisfy the horse market. There is not enough product anywhere, anywhere. Like when when we have brokers who are brokers who are brokers, brokers are brokers are brokers, running around going, I have isolate CBD isolate, I have THC distillate, I have it, and you go all with the chain trying to get it, and you find out smoke and mirrors, everybody selling the same product from the same provider. There's not enough product. Every single one of the food and beverage companies, all the cosmetic firms, all the pharmaceutical firms, all the new businesses being birthed, all the dispensaries, they're all coming into the space. So everybody from Coco Bottling to Estee Lauder to Johnson & Johnson, they're all coming into the space. And they all need extraction. And the, and the farmers have to grow the product. And the extractors have to extract the product. And you have to have a license, experience, and distribution. You have to have everything tied off, the right price, and, and SOP. There isn't enough product. Right now, this the demand it 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 out it outweighs the supply massively. What did Canada just changed their law just very very recently? How does that affect you? Well, Canada doesn't affect us. Canada just went complete retail and lost ran out of product just like Vegas within days, and they're back into it again. We're in a California market for a THC, which you can't bring Canadian product into California, right? You're sequestered. So you're not your legal market in California for THC laden cannabis products is restrictive. You cannot you cannot bring product grown or manufactured that has THC in it from Arizona, Canada, or any other any other environment outside of California. It has to be grown, developed, and sold and consumed in the state of California because of federal restriction. So all of the markets don't affect. The good news about a Canadian market that's exploding is that eventually the federal lines will fall, eventually the international lines will fall, and then you go into acquisition. 